I see the glow shining in their eyes. It seems distant, strange. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is finally freaking Monday. And let me give a shout out to my buddy. Ron Oliver from Tower Light Records, Cowboys Music One, who does all of my music remixes here. And this was actually the mix that I was supposed to use on my Cowboys Mafia. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we can make him an offer. You know, I need to use this one much uh, a lot more. Uh, here with Cowboys Mafia. Um, I've got some great friends out there that are doing wonderful, wonderful work. And I was talking to my buddy, um, Dak Attack. Okay. Dak Attack, who actually came up and found out that the case with Dak Prescott on Friday, uh, the plaintiff on the that's suing Dak Prescott, are, are working on dismissing the case. And my suggestion was because everybody covered Dak Prescott because he was like, well, not that many people covered it. 105 fan, the day. I saw an article, of course, on CNN Sports, Sports Illustrated, you know, all the talking heads. Everybody talked about, you know, the whole situation there. But nobody's talking about that it's being dismissed. And so what I suggested to him is, if you are old enough like me to remember back in 1979, when the Iranians take, took American hostages, and it was for 447 days, that every day when you watch the news, it was day number 256 of the Iranian hostage crisis. I told him, I said, you need to do something kind of like that with the whole Dak Prescott until they actually start covering it. Or it may end up being kind of like the apology that we're waiting for, for Des Bryant. Because they literally said there was a tape out there that was five times worse than Ray Rice's. And if you saw Ray Rice's video uh, where he literally punched his girlfriend, fiance, in the face in an elevator, five times worse? Bro. Anyway, we won't expect to hear anything from that anytime soon. We only, of course, hear about the slander of Dak Prescott and how he's a bum and need to get rid of him. But today is an important day for the Dallas Cowboys. In fact, I dare say that this might be the most important day until training camp. Because today, 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 friends, because you acted, today we have a special for you. We have Cowboys opening their voluntary off-season program. That's right. OTAs begin at the star phase one begins today, which is limited to meetings, weightlifting, and rehab. And this is the first time the coaches can start working with the players. So this is Mike Zimmer's chance to start letting players know what the philosophy is going to be, what kind of defense that we're going to be run, where you're going to be, what we expect of you, what you need to work on, and things like that. And the bigger question, because this is where it gets to be really, really interesting, is as we've seen Brandon Ayuk, who is basically no longer following his team, no longer following San Francisco, and asking for a trade. Of course, you know, whenever anybody's asking for a trade, it's always the Cowboys. Yeah, okay, so we're on the list with, with him. Yeah, we're on the list with Brandon Ayuk. Only in the media's mind. Um, the question will be is, will C.D. Lamb show up for OTAs? That is the million-dollar question. The Dallas Cowboys, surprisingly, with not one, not two, but three players that are looking to get paid, looking to get paid, that so far there's been no animosity between the team and the player. We haven't even heard Stephen Jones talking about how they need a team-friendly deal. In fact, we've heard very little from them. We've heard more from 105 The Fan trying to negotiate uh, on behalf of the Joneses than we have from, of course, um, the GM and owner. So we'll see. If he's there, that's great news. And I often wonder here because... 
I want you to know that we are being used, okay? We are pawns in the big game. And the big game is, is to get people to watch by any means necessary. Get people to watch. The Dallas Cowboys, the biggest fan base out there. They're going to watch. They are thirsty for knowledge of anything. They are hoping to see some changes that will make a difference. And they play off of that. That's why you hear Brandon Ayuk to the Cowboys. Cow, you know, you, you see articles that are saying, you know, linking. Don't be surprised if the Cowboys draft a quarterback in the first round. You could say that about any team. You literally could say that, except maybe Kansas City. But you could literally see that with anybody. And, and we're sitting here looking at the Cowboys that have more quarterbacks than anybody else. Although, one could say, everybody's on the last year of their quarterback deal. So there's that. So all eyes will be at the star to see if C.D. Lamb is there. And um, I'm going to be going to go work on the uh, farmhouse. So I don't know. Um, if I'll be up, be able to upload very quickly because it's out kind of in the middle of nowhere and the Wi-Fi is not real good. So, uh, stay tuned to my, my associates that if he is there guaranteed, one of my associates will let you know that he is there at practice. Um, I am excited actually, because this means this is a step closer. Um, all of a sudden things are going to just going to be like, bam, 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 bam. Okay. Because we got the draft next week. I still can't believe that next week, okay, I got a lot of work to do between now and then. I got more equipment I need to get. I need to get myself another one of these backup batteries because when you're out in the field there, you know, you burn a lot of power and things. So um, we got to make sure that we have everything because we're going to be broadcasting live from the draft. And hopefully my knees will not buckle standing there for about six hours straight in the same spot holding a microphone. But we'll be there at the draft. Can't believe that uh, a week from tomorrow, <laughs> my main man, Game Time Brian, will be at my house and we'll be leaving on Wednesday. So definitely check us out during the draft. We'll be there giving you the sights, the sounds, the look, the feel, and the emotion as the Cowboys get on the clock or trade up, down, back, or whatever. The one thing I can say, regardless of the bullshit that you get from the ESPNs and everything else, the Cowboys won't be taking a quarterback in the first round. Sorry. They're just not. They're not going to. Every year, remember last year, it was the Cowboys were intrigued by C.J. Stroud and so on. You're not going to take the fifth or sixth prospect late in the first round when you have five quarterbacks and over $65 million tied up in quarterback compensation. You're not going to take a quarterback in the first round when you need offensive linemen, running back, linebackers, defensive line. You literally aren't. So the next the next week and a half are going to be telling about the future of the Cowboys. If they do somehow take a quarterback in the first round, then you can best believe that Dak Prescott will not be getting another contract. And if CeeDee Lamb doesn't show up today for OTAs, you can definitely see that things might be getting, hmm, a little interesting. And maybe maybe that's what the Cowboys need is to get pushed a little bit to go ahead and do their job. Because the lackadaisical method uh, that they go about doing these things, it'd be one thing if they took their time and got great deals. But when I look at Zeke Elliott's when they waited till the last minute while he was in Cabo and the season's about to start, and they paid $90 million dollars for him and only got one season of him rushing for a thousand yards. When we look back now at Dak Prescott's contract, where we have the $55 million cap hit, when they waited and waited and waited on that one, you can't look and say that that was a great deal for the team. So maybe they might want to start trying to work on these things sooner than later. But what do I know? 
Uh, as we get ready to get out of here, good people, let's take a listen to, of course, the talking heads. And the reason I do these things, because some people say, oh, you're just stealing content from people. Whatever, man, go pound some sand. The reality is there's only so much, th so many things that we can all talk about, okay? There's only, you know, C.D. Lamb, is he going to show or not show? Is he going to show or not show? That, that's the bit, bottom line, okay? You, you, you know, and, and as far as people working the star basically it's one or two people that come out with something and it goes everywhere so you could literally say everybody is stealing content because nobody is at 32 teams facilities every single day anyway let's hear what they have to say about the question marks here now the cowboys have all these contract concerns that need to be addressed this offseason, and so far, they've done a combined total of none of it. Entering the final year of his deal, Dak Prescott has the second highest cap hit in the NFL. He has a no-trade clause. Cowboys cannot franchise tag him. So he's got total control of the organization. Meanwhile, Dallas picking up Micah Parsons' fifth-year option, but they place the option on him as a defensive end rather than a linebacker, which would pay Parsons $3 million less in 2025. And then we get to C.D. Lamb, set to enter the final year of his rookie deal come September, a fifth-year option that'll pay him nearly $18 million unless a new deal is agreed mm -hmm. upon. But the Dallas Morning News is suggesting that might not be so easy either. They had an article in which they wrote, and I quote, Barring a contract extension that, when complete, is expected to make Lamb the highest paid wide receiver in NFL history, Lamb won't take the field. Lamb is an elite player on the cusp of market resetting compensation. Participating in the spring under a rookie contract team option is not what elite players do. So RG3 and our beloved former Cowboy Marcus Spears here with us this morning. And we've been talking so much about the Cowboys this offseason. And all, all, all the while, we keep talking. They keep doing absolutely nothing. And we keep saying, well, when Stop they get to Stop shaking your head, RG3. <laughs> <laughs> Stop shaking your head, RG3. I know, bro. I know. I know, man. I know. Before we get going, I already know. Okay? Go ahead, G. I'm sorry. Marcus. No, I get it. I think you speak for the entire fan base. But I guess my point is we've been saying, well, by the time it starts to really matter, they'll get to this, they'll get to that. Well, here it comes. The Dallas Morning News is telling us the first checkpoint on all this is does C.D. Lamb show up without a new contract? Mm -hmm. And the time to find that out is rapidly coming upon us. Today. What do you think here, Marcus? Well, if I'm C.D. Lamb, I'm not showing up. All right, because this has worked in the past. When you think about what Ezekiel Elliott did, when you think about what Dak Prescott and how that contract situation did, Dak was a little bit different. He was uh, participating in some things. But if you look at CD's situation, now we're here, fifth-year option needs to be exercised. The productivity. Gee, Minnesota got the same thing on their hands with Justin Jefferson. So this is not an anomaly when it comes to the, to the league based on how he performed last year. CD has clearly become the number one wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. The last one to get paid was Dez Bryant to the tune of a $100 million contract. CD mm -hmm. understands what this market is, and he also understands now how vitally he important he is to what the Dallas Cowboys need to be or, or should be trying to be. And, Gene, here's the, here's the crux of the situation, because this is so good how it correlates. We watched in free agency the Dallas Cowboys sit out there and do absolutely zero, okay? Mm -hmm. They have a history of paying their own guys who are highly productive. So this wouldn't be out of the ordinary to, for keeping C.D. Lamb and paying him money. But the problem is now that you have to do this and you also have to team build with two offensive linemen walking out the door, with your running back walking out the door. Obviously, Michael Gallup being gone. So your receiver room doesn't even look the same anymore. C.D. Lamb understands there has been no movement in this offseason. I came off a season where I was one of the most productive wide receivers in the NFL, and we don't look the same as a football team, so that requires me to get a lot of money because I am the most important part to any tune of success when it comes to offense outside of Dak Prescott. And maybe even inside. So, so RG3, and yep. Marcus, you might want to cover your ears for this. Robert, how would you characterize the Cowboys offseason so far? Yeah, Grinny, the Dallas Cowboys have had the worst offseason in the NFL. The worst. 
I mean, you heard Marcus talk about it. They lost their starting center. They lost a behemoth left tackle in Tyron Smith. Don't have a starting running back. Mm -hmm. They lost uh, Armstrong and Hankins and Van Der Esch on the defensive side. So to me, like, what is the goal here with not paying C.D. Lamb already? You have three players that should be the cornerstone of your franchise. Yet yeah. there's already reports out there that Dak is going to have to play the last year of his deal. They're not going to commit to him long term. There's reports that they don't like Micah Parsons in certain aspects. Now there's reports that C.D. Lamb is going to hold out if he doesn't get a new contract, which he should do. But if the goal coming into the offseason for the Cowboys was to, to fix their culture and focus on winning and make it all about ball, then they're failing absolutely miserably. Mm. These three guys have helped you win 12 games over the last three years. I know Cowboys fans have to be tired of this circus and this continual song of dance of just getting attention but not winning when it matters. I would True. rather the Cowboys just come out and say, hey, all you guys are going to play on your contracts and we're not going to do this whole thing. But in order for the Cowboys to truly be all in, they can't be all out on their three best players. I'll put it this way to you, Greeny. The Cowboys right now are acting like a toxic partner in a relationship. Ooh. You, you address something with them. They say, I got you. We're going to focus on ball. We're going to clean it all up. They clean it up for two weeks. And then they get right back to doing the same dang thing. And it does feel like we're just having another situation where the Cowboys are focused on more things than just winning. Marcus, rather than angry, Ooh. you look somewhat resigned. Perplexed. I'm, I'm trying to, you have the most expressive face in sports television. That, that's what I'm reading from you here, big fella. Gee, the hardest part for me, man, is that, and you know this, Michael Greenberg, and you know it's serious when I call you a whole name. <laughs> Brother, I've been talking about this for the last three years. Yeah. I've been talking about Dallas really going after trying to win a championship for the last three years. Gee, every free agent period that has come up since I started doing NFL football, and we've been talking about Dallas, I've been waiting on them to make the move. Every time, bro, they draft well. They, their players that they draft, they do, they do a hell of a job for this football team. That is not going to win a championship and it feels like rg3 sat on me on monday night with, with me on monday night countdown when we were having this dis discussion i said it didn't matter who the coach is it matters about what they yep. do in the off season it matters what they do in the off season that's the truth now here keep in mind i want you guys to understand something here let me pop this in here because you know, I'm working on using, I, I have uh, been using uh, uh, the, the, the streaming software. It's similar to um, some of the other stuff in there, but it's actually a whole kit and caboodle and stuff. And I'm working on using more and more of the features and things in here. Here's the thing that's kind of interesting to me when we talk about letting guys go. Now, we let... Amari Cooper go, who was still in the prime of his career, although he has checked out numerous times towards the end of the season. You know, a lot of times it's it's funny because I have people who beat me down and they say, well, you know, we had the teams in 21 and things. Yeah, we did, but we also had some problems going down the stretches of some of those seasons. If you look at Amari Cooper's last year there in 2021, by the end of the season, he was checked out. He was kind of a, almost a non-factor in the playoffs. You can look at how Zeke Elliott, who had the um, PCL injury midseason, where his numbers literally dropped by a yard per carry. You could end up looking at um, Tony Pollard, who had the plantar fasciitis, where he wasn't as effective when he got to the playoffs as well. And you could look at Tyron Smith, who had been in and out of the lineup. So we kind of limped into the playoffs. I know there's a lot of people out there that have revisionist history and they don't remember some of these things. But the bottom line is, is if you cannot run the football and you can't stop the run, you're not going to be successful. And keep in mind, the Cowboys this past year gave up more points than anybody else in any playoff game this year. I know some of that. Pick six by Dak is part of that as well. But the whole team needs to play better. And this is where we hope that the OTAs starting today, that there's a new feel in Dallas and there's things going to be done differently. 
But I want you to look at this list because this is single season leaders of yardage. Calvin Johnson, Hall of Famer, 1,964. Cooper Cup, of course, with uh, Matthew Stafford, 1,947. Julio Jones, 2015, I believe that was their Super Bowl year, uh, 1871. Jerry Rice, 1848. Okay, of course, with Joe, um, uh, Steve Young. Uh, Antonio Brown with Big Ben, 1,834 yards. Justin Jefferson with Kirk Frickin' Cousins, who is the wide receiver moneymaker. Because, guys, you, you may not like Kirk Cousins, but wide receivers love Kirk Cousins because he get them paid. Uh, 1,809 yards uh, two years ago. Uh, Tariq Hill, this past year, 1,799. Isaac Bruce, 1,781. And CeeDee Lamb. 1,749 people we are talking about the best wide receiving seasons in the history of the NFL and unlike Calvin Johnson who had 1,964 yards CD had 12 12 TDs to Calvin Johnson's five that's an amazing season now your problems aren't having talent. Your problem is what to do with the talent. That goes to coaching, attitude, and people you put around them. That's the bottom line. What's even crazier is, is when you think about the season that C.D. Lamb had with um, the way the season started, think about those first four or five games where he was averaging less than 53 yards a game. And it wasn't until after the bye week that the offense kicked in gear. Had that offense been in gear early on, you may have seen the NFL record. You may have seen the NFL record. And this year, having Dak Prescott and Brandon Cooks in this offense for the second year with Mike McCarthy calling the plays where they should feel more comfortable, they should come out the box, boom, ready to go. And if they can get a better running game, this offense is ready to fly. This offense is ready to fly. Their problem has been is running the football to be balanced. You've got the passing attack. You need to get the running game to go with it. All right, good people. Time for me to go get some work done. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And um, we will be talking to you guys real soon. Peace out. I see the glow shining in their eyes. Love this beach. I'm gonna make him an offer, Captain.